trying to get there. Okay, we see that we see that the people are joining in. So let's give them a couple of more seconds to tune in. Um, and obviously recording will be shared so people wouldn't miss so much into it. Okay. Great, awesome. Well, um, welcome everyone. We have another exciting uh, webinar slash fireside chat. So today's session will be split between two different format. Um, it, it is more of like a discussion and uh, obviously you know, we're excited to get your feedback or also your question along the way. I'm very excited to talk um, to you all about metrics that you know goes beyond typical or generic marketing metrics. Um, with me today, we have Ravi Yada, who you all know, most of you already know him from different conferences, quite a lot of videos that he makes um, about the very popular or going to be very popular product from Microsoft, um, Microsoft Clarity. Uh, welcome, Ravi. Hey, thank you for having me. Um, as, as I mentioned, I'm uh, Ravi Yada. I lead the product team for Microsoft Clarity. Uh, and I've been at Microsoft for over a decade now, so I feel like an old timer here, uh, especially when all the new interns are about to start coming in the next week. So I'm super excited to be here and share information about Microsoft Clarity and Behavioral Analytics. Awesome. Well, thank you very much for, for the intro, Ravi. Um, yeah, I, I see that Microsoft is doing quite a lot of exciting stuff, like, you know, with AI, now the Clarity, a bunch of other products that you guys are working on. Um, so glad to see that a great comeback and then a battle head to head with you know, other technology provider for sure. Um, so today we will talk uh, specifically about behavior uh, metrics, which you know you what are the things that matters to you? What are the things that you should care about? You already know the topic outlines that we had. So Ravi is going to go through some of the um, the, the the benefits of of tracking behavioral metrics uh, and and metrics that goes beyond just like you know click session and and um, bounce rate and things like that. And how you can utilize that to, you know, improve your campaign and, and get better conversion and go from there. So um, without further ado, Ravi, do you want to just take it on and share a screen, if you don't mind? Sure. Please? Sounds good. Sorry, one last thing. I forgot completely. The housekeeping item. So use definitely chat options to leave your messages or comments. Um, I'll try to take them and pass it back to Ravi while he's presenting. Um, so if you have any questions, by all means, just go through that. And we will also take a couple of questions towards the end. So don't worry about um, missing out uh, your questions. So for sure, we'll take them towards the end. All right, Ravi, back to you. Thanks. Uh, so just to get started, you know, when we think about metrics, everyone thinks about the two groups of metrics, quant quantitative and the qualitative, right? And most people are familiar with the quantitative, which is like your traditional, as uh, Niza mentioned, bounce rate sessions, pages per session, all of these things. Uh, but people don't fo focus as much on the qualitative side. And the reason why it's so important is because what the quantitative tell you is an overview of what happened on your site or what happened on your product but you need to understand why that's happening. And when you don't understand the why that's happening, then you start making up reasons of why we need to do certain aspects, whether it's, hey, how do I drive more, uh, my, more revenue from my business? Well, I help come up with random ideas that might, some might work, some might not work, and you're not being very data-driven to figure out what would drive that impact. Or the worst case is you get a hippo, the highest paid person in the room, who then makes the call saying, hey, you know, I'm the boss, so I think we should make this button yellow. That will drive us additional revenue by 20%. I think that's what we should do. So we want to avoid both of these situations. And, and that's how we kind of learned about the need for clarity, even at Microsoft. So on Bing, we would run various A-B experiments on our pages. Like, for example, let's say what's on the right is our page, and maybe we experimented with changing it blue or adding more boxes in different places. And we would see some scorecards that are quantitative like this, right? We see conversion drop or bounce rate increase, and we didn't really know why, and we were guessing ourselves. So we thought, wouldn't it be better if we could actually understand what the user journey was that led to these things? So maybe in this case, the user was you know, shown a pop-up, they tried to click, it didn't work, right? And they tried clicking in different places and they got stuck. So this could explain why the metrics moved in that direction. So that's the whole point behind behavioral analytics and what we're trying to do with Clarity. So traffic analytics gives you the general sense of this experience and what behavioral analytics trying to help you is find the motivations, 
why the users interact with that in that specific way on your website or application. And to do this, what Clarity provides is three main core functionalities. The first being session recording or replay. So the ability to watch a user journey to figure out what's where they're getting stuck and how their experience is. Then two is aggregating this user's journeys across multiple users or sessions or over time to generate a heat map of where people are engaging, how far they're scrolling and where they're not. And then finally, find being different sessions or heat maps that are relevant for you to find the pain points, we created a set of what we call behavioral metrics and insights to help you find that. And you might be thinking, you know, this sounds very much like I'm trying to optimize my page and, and is this only for like website designers or application developers? Who's this really for? Uh, but I think it's for everyone on the product team. So including marketing and especially for marketers, what's on top of your mind is how do I drive more sales or signups or conversions to my product? You know, I'm spending all this money to drive advertising or social media campaigns to my product, or I, how do I make my product more appealing? And all of these things have aspects of developing or work outside of just building a website. But at the end of the day, your website or application is the one that's going to be the thing that interacts with your customers and sells them at the end of the day. So as much as you invest in, you know, spending and optimizing that, you know, ROI for your or CPA for your advertising spend, well, if the landing page is not well thought through or designed in a way that it's frictionless for customers, well, all that, all that money you spent is going to be not so useful. So just showing you real quick examples of what these experiences are that we provide. One is session recording. So this is how you can see a user coming in, logging into our Clarity product. And so we can understand what is the friction points they might face, where they struggle across different page views. And then as I mentioned, the heat maps show you uh, click data. So the redder the area is, the more clicks that are happening. And you can scroll down on your page to see, okay, where are they clicking and where they're not. And then finally, different metrics. And I'll talk about some of these metrics later on. Um, and these metrics will help you jump into those session recordings or heat maps to find those pain points by customers. And since we've launched, we've not only built this for websites, now we have Clarity available for mobile apps as well. So this is something brand new just in the last month. So if you are also building a mobile app built on some native Android or React Native or Cordova and other frameworks, now you can run Clarity and do all of the great things you do on your website with it. And one other interesting feature, I just wanted to finish up the new stuff, is Copilot in Clarity. So as you guys must have been hearing in the news, Microsoft's been investing a lot in AI and in the generative AI technology with GPT. So we've actually incorporated that into Clarity as well. So one of the things is watching session replays can be time consuming. I know Nizam says he watches a lot of sessions, but I'm sure his time is also limited. So we looked at how do we make this more productive for folks? So now what we do is with one click button, you don't have to watch the session. We generate a session insights or key takeaways from that session. So you can quickly read it. So whether it's a 40 minute session or a 10 minute session, you get these bullet points of data so you can decide, do I want to jump into that session and watch it? Um, so this is something really cool and useful that we just released and it's becoming a fan favorite very quickly. And something that's coming up is a whole new way. Don't have a demo for you, but what's coming soon is a way to chat with Clarity. So you can actually ask questions like, how do I drive more conversion on this page? How did my conversion rate change? from this to that, or how did my rage clicks change on PC in India compared to mobile in China? So you can do all these interesting questions and get data very very quickly. It's like um, having a conversation with the conversion rate optimization specialist, right? Just asking questions. <laughs> exactly, exactly. We all want our personal conversion rate optimizer. So that's what we're trying to <laughs> That is pretty cool feature. Yeah, yeah. So moving on, like, I kind of give you an overview of what these features are, but like, how are people actually using this in the world, right? I know Nizam can probably share about how he's been using Clarity, but let me give you some other perspectives besides Nizam's perspective. So one is this company called Travel Boom that builds and manages the website for Myrtle Beach golf trips. And what they did is they looked at our scroll heat map and the scroll heat map shows you how far do people scroll on your page. 
And this is really important because if your key conversion goal items like add to cart or shop now or below the average fold, basically the user has to scroll to see it, then you're gonna lose a lot of conversions. So what they did is they, they looked at scrolling map and saw exactly that. They saw less than you know 40% were actually seeing their shop now button. So very simple change, they moved it to the top, right? They did A-B experiments and then they quickly saw 30% increase in conversion. So it's not like rocket science levels of changes you need to make to your site. These are quick insights you figure out. Another one that's my favorite because I love bubble tea as well as I like this product too, <laughs> but uh, this company basically sells, sells bubble tea kits online and they started in the pandemic. So everything is through the website and they looked at the click heat map and what they saw were more people clicking on the learn more button than add to cart, which was right next to it. So they're like, why is that happening? So they did what anyone would do, look at session replays of what happened once people clicked on learn more. And they found that people were confused on how to use the kit. How do I make this product? So based on that learning, they created a simple GIF to show how the product works, put it on their homepage, and that dramatically increased their conversions because now they were explaining to the customer, educating to the customer before asking them to buy it. So we have like various use cases of each of these features that can help you drive more value to your business. Even things like signup flows. So this company, ProProfs, was looking at how to optimize their signup flow. They saw a lot of abandonment of people not completing their signup flow. So they looked at session recording to understand where they were getting stuck, what was potentially causing this, and they ended up realizing that uh, breaking that, this signup flow into smaller chunks actually drove their monthly signups by 27% and end-to-end -end conversion of their whole product lifecycle by 70%. So you can also use Clarity tactfully to drive improvements to certain parts of your uh, product or application based on the goals you have. And uh, another good one that I really want to share is this one's really fun in the sense that it's not a typical product. Hello Prenup it helps to couples write a prenup before they get married. And usually you involve a lawyer. It's very complicated, very legalese. So they were trying to simplify that by self-service product. But as you can imagine, that can still be very complicated. So what they did is they wanted to understand where were people getting stuck? Where were the friction points? So they looked at session replay and found dead clicks where dead, dead clicks are where people click on a part of the page and nothing happens. And they saw that people were confused with their user experience. Or they saw that people were reading some of the content, moving their mouse over the uh, content. And sometimes they would move their mouse over the same content multiple times, also indicating that the user maybe was confused by what they were reading. It's not clear enough, simple language. So they did a lot of these fixes that are kind of minor here and there, improving the text, improving the user, uh, input values, all of that. And that drove 32% increase in month over month revenue for them. And if you, and, and as a marketing person, you might also be spending time advertising on Bing, Google, Facebook, all of the different advertising platforms. So it's really important that your landing page helps convert and does the last mile effort to get you that full ROI for your business. So this company, Adapter Wild, was managing Middleton's site and trying to drive more conversions. And they were running ads on Google and they were using Google Analytics to figure out what was going on, but they weren't able to figure out what they needed to do to drive more revenue for or ROI for their ad spend. And they saw that with Clarity, they saw rage clicks. They saw rage clicks, which are basically user frustrations we detect when users click rapidly on a small area. So this indicates that the user either is confused by the experience or something in the experience is broken. So in this case, the user clicks, 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 and nothing happens, and that causes them to abandon. So they were spending this money to drive traffic to the landing page, and then users were getting frustrated on that landing page. So they, again, made all these fixes based on the rage click metric, increased their conversions, reduced their cost per acquisition by 25%. So all in all, help them like gain more value out of their advertising spend. And since we're marketers, I have one last advertising example, which is with conversion pages. So conversion pages help Shopify merchants optimize their ad spend and improve their conversion on landing pages. And so one of their customers like this one, it was they were looking at to dr uh, drive more uh, conversions through their ad spend. And they found that 60% of their users 
don't actually scroll down on their page. And so if this is the page you land at and you don't scroll down 60% of folks, well, you're not gonna buy this product most likely because that's not visible. So what they did was not only did they use Google Analytics, but they used Clarity with it to find these specific corner cases of pages that they didn't have enough people scrolling down on. And they were able to move some of this content above the fold so that people can actually see it and see the add to cart button. And that drove uh, increase in conversion rate for them, as well as reduce their costs per acquisition uh, by $12 and increase their profit margin by 3x. So these are some examples of customers of ours, and we have a lot more, about almost 30 case studies on our website you can check out to get inspired from of how people used Clarity. And this is not just anybody else, but this also happens for us. As Clarity, this was actually our, uh, our website tile that we had on our website. And we actually saw a lot of dead clicks on that play button. Even though it was a image showing people that it's a feature has a replay or a recording feature functionality, people thought that was a video and you would see a lot of dead clicks on that. So we also make these same mistakes and we learn from this by using Clarity on our own Clarity websites. Um, I think one other example I want to show is on in another Microsoft product, Bing. So in Bing, we noticed there were actually a lot of rage clicks happening when users were trying to select the query and edit the query. And that's because there's a small missed margin issue where the orange part was where people were clicking, but that wasn't a clickable target. Only the blue part was. And it's like a small margin thing that should have been probably pushed all the way to where the orange is, but wasn't done. So small bug, but we went ahead and fixed that. And that drove a lot of our satisfaction metrics up. So we, we, we've been not only used, Clarity is not only used by Microsoft, but also external customers to drive better value for them. Um, so th that's kind of quick overview of what Clarity is, and I wanted to share how it's used. And maybe Nizam, you want to share how you kind of use Clarity? Yeah, absolutely. So I mean, first of all, it, it's glad I'm I'm really glad to see that you guys are obviously it's a great tool, and you guys use it in house as well to see like you know for your other product, which is a testament to how good the product is. And it, these little things. It's it's so tiny, teeny changes, but has significant impact, right? And the example that you shared, it, it's so amazing. Um, and then we see the same thing as well. Like another thing that I really loved is the the messaging. Most of the time, as a marketer, that we see that um, we think that some of the messaging that we are uh, putting on our landing pages would work or will work or resonate with our audiences. Often it, it is completely the opposite way, right? I think that's a great testament. It's like, you know, with the, the tool, you can easily see that pe whether people understanding the messaging or even like, you know, trying, or is it working for your conversions? I, I'm, I'm really um, glad that you shared all the all the examples. A couple of ways that we use from our end, um, you know, like the, the one of the examples you shared, which is like driving people from ads to our landing pages. Um, often what happens, let's say we add forms. So there's quite a lot of, uh, script that we have on our site, which is a bad habit for most marketers. And we're trying to minimize the use of scripts. So that conflicts with the forms. And then sometimes we would see like, the, oh, they were driving traffic, but they're not converting. So instantly, if you didn't have the visibility, you would think maybe something is wrong with the, the ads or, you know, without knowing anything, we just start changing the ads or the, the people that you're driving. Uh, but then we realized that it is actually the form. We, it, people are clicking on the submit button isn't working. And it is because of the conflict that the, the, the button or the form has with the other script on our site, which is obviously a great insight, which you wouldn't usually have uh, without a tool like this. And then um, also, uh, you know, seeing that how people are interacting. I think one of the other insights which you shared, uh, it's great, is that we do the same thing as the, uh, the scroll depth, right? So the, the first fold, below the fold, how many people are staying within, within that fold? I think it's quite crucial for all of us to know is, that, oh, I'm sure we all know that, right? But so often we forget, like in a, um, as a marketer, you want to like throw everything into a page to see what stick, right? And, and you want to add a case study, you want to add testimonial, you want to add like a bunch of other stuff, repeated information, but that affects the conversion. And that's, that's, that's exactly what we see often is that the simplicity 
of the the landing pages the the simpler the pages the better conversion you will have simple matches they they saw your ads they know exactly what what are they getting into you don't have to give them all this information and if they don't convert you have retargeting method to go back and show your case study to show your videos and a bunch of other stuff um later on stage i think that is very crucial that we you know the way one of the way we use is like to see how far they scroll put the things that are important in the uh, above the fold and that affects our conversion rate significantly um, so yeah, like, and I think the, honestly, the things that I wanted to share, the, your example covers literally all of the, <laughs> the scenarios. Um, one question that I had though, I saw, uh, mm-hmm. Google analytics, our favorite yeah. tool as well in some yeah. of the slides. So do you have an integration between the tool? How does it work? Uh, how can, how can marketers benefit from it? Yeah. Great question. I think it's a question I get often. People are like, Hey, do I use Google analytics or use clarity? And our answer is you can actually use both. Um, Google Analytics, you know, has been around for years. It's a great product and it helps you see what we call the traffic analytics. And then Clarity along married with that gives you that behavioral data. So we actually allow an option to connect the two tools together. So once you sign up for Clarity, you can say, hey, connect my Google Analytics account. And when you do that, you get some good benefits out of it too. One, well, if you have uh, segments that you've set up in Google Analytics, like you might've been using for GA for years and you set up all of these different segments, well, they get imported. So you can slice and dice the clarity data, but with the same segments that you're used to. Then second, uh, we actually push a custom dimension into Google Analytics dashboard. So now you'll see another column in your data that says clarity playback URL. So you can jump into a session replay from that. And there's other smaller things that we do as well. Like if you set up Google goals on your Google Analytics, well, we also import those too, because usually you set up these goals, which are multi-step. You really probably want to understand why people aren't going from step one to step two. That's where session replays and heat maps can help you even further. And we also built this mini GA dashboard inside Clarity based on the imported data to help you so you don't have to switch between the tools as often and you can get some of that jump from GA data to Clarity much uh, quicker. And and just to confirm, um, obviously the GA, the, the universal cloud, universally is it's yeah. sunsetting next month. So the, the integration that you have, it works for GA4 as well. Yes. Okay. yes. Okay. Just wanted to clarify that. Um, one of the clarification, uh, if you are using Clarity, awesome, great. If you are not, um, it is free tool. So we're not getting anything out of it. <laughs> we are not trying to increase the sale of the tool. It is a free tool, definitely. Um, we're just trying to share some of the, thoughts and um, you know example that we have seen, which kind of helps us um, and obviously Ravi and Ravi's team as well and how we can utilize it um, going forward as well. Um, back to you, Ravi, uh, you can take away with the, the remaining information that you wanted to share. Yeah, the last thing I wanted to share was, you know, just tips on how to actually get started with Clarity. Um, because usually people, whenever you think about another analysis tool, oh my God, it's another new set of work that I need to figure out and use. But I think you'll find it very surprising that it's actually very simple and straightforward to use. And beyond that, like this is what I call my cheat sheet of flow. And because I do analysis of clarity for our own Microsoft internal products, that's how I, you know, what I call dog food my own product. So like the first thing I start with is understanding what the purpose of my analysis is, whether it's that I am generally looking to figure out what are the problems on my site to fix them or, hey, I really need to drive our revenue. So I need to create more conversions. So that's the problem I'm trying to focus on. So based on that, you might start in different methods, but the most uh, popular way I start with is analyzing at a page level. So I look at either the click or scroll heat map to start with. And that gives me the high level view to set my context of where are actually clicks happening? What's the distribution of clicks look like? And then I can slice by PC or mobile or tablet. Uh, and then I get a general glimpse of what's going on. And then I can then jump into the specific metrics that I care about, like de- rage clicks and dead clicks about where users are getting frustrated on the page. So even on our heat map, you can actually filter the heat map by all of the clicks that are rage clicks. So you can just see a heat map of rage clicks on your page. Then I can start prioritizing and look at sessions. Why were there rage clicks there? And that helps me find problems with our product and where we can make user experience changes or bug fixes that can drive these things. So that's where like, I go from this heat map of clicked regions to these session recordings. And then I think the biggest tip is 
once you find some interesting case, then you're gonna start filtering the data. Okay, well, if this is happening here, how does this compare to X market or uh, traffic that comes from search engine versus paid media? How does that compare? So you can start slicing and dicing data by that way. And the other thing that's really beneficial that I don't have it called out in here is we have this ability called custom tags. And if you're familiar with the terminology with GA, you've heard of custom dimensions. It's the ability to pass in your own key value pairs and Clarity will save those values and provide those as filters. So let's say your product, you have cohort A of users or you're doing A-B testing and you have variant A and variant B. Well, you can pass these values so you can slice and dice the data based on that too. So we see a lot of use cases where people have connected Clarity with A-B testing tools like A-B Tasty or Optimizely. And then they can also run the next phase after the analysis and figure out the fixes, now they're going to flight the different experiments. Um, and then they can also use clarity in that step to figure out, okay, why did one treatment do better than the other treatment? And then be a little bit more data informed uh, when making your decision to decide what to go after. That, that's definitely very um, uh, easy. You know the the instructions that you have. I think is and and definitely something very useful for for all the marketers. A couple of things that came out of the uh, you know the uh, information that you shared. One is the um, the script. So actually, before the script is the you, you mentioned the optimizely and other um, A/B testing platform. Do you have any plan or um, any intention to bring A/B testing features within Clarity so that you know marketers don't have to use another tool <laughs> to yeah. run the A/B test? So initially when we were building some of this, we saw everyone, like a lot of people were using Google Optimize and I know right. that's sunsetting. That's it, yes. Uh, so that was a surprise to us too. So we, we didn't want to build a new product because there was already a free product that a lot of people were using. So we in, instead embraced that product and built it. So we supported Geo as well. Uh -huh. But now that's going. And I think right now we are still focused as a behavioral analytics product to find you the right insights. And especially mm -hmm. our investments in like the co-pilot stuff, um, what we get a common feedback from customers is that, hey, like this is really great for me to understand what's going on, but I do have to spend time to do this analysis. Can you do that for me? Can you like use AI and suggest here the four things that I should do to my site or four problems I see? And we're like, yes, that's, that's our North Star. That's where we want to get to. And technology is catching up to that now, especially... Mm -hmm the generative AI models and GPT. So we're looking at, okay, maybe every day you open the dashboard or you get an email from us and it says, hey, we noticed these four things, you know, across all of these things. Would you like to explore and see some sessions? Um, or here's some actions you can do to fix these things. Mm -hmm. Or here's suggestions. Like we see 60% of the users don't go below the fold and you have a buy button below. Maybe you should bring it up. So we want to build those smarts and get to solving those interesting problems. Yeah, that's that that would be really cool. Um I'm I really I'm really excited to see when you know the full launch of the the, the co-pilot is live. Um the other quick question I had regarding regarding the uh the integration or getting started with Clarity is the script. Um so I have noticed for our site the Clarity script didn't affect the loading speed significantly. Is yeah. that the case in all site or does that you know, matter for server to server or have you seen any impact or negative impact of the, the loading speed um, by the, the script? Yeah, great question. So Clarity is designed to not impact your page performance. So it's designed to run asynchronously. So it's not going to block any of the page events or page data that needs to load for your actual customer before mm -hmm. to send data back to our, back to the Clarity servers to help instrument all the data. So it's built in that fashion. Uh, and on top of that, we constantly measure what's the size of our script as well. We don't want it to bloat and be bigger. So we do benchmarks every once in a while to check where we are. So we make sure that script size is as small as possible. On top of that, we also make sure we are not uh, wasting any compute space, uh, compute time, or blocking any in, uh, important task on the website itself. Mm -hmm. So... If you do find any issues or concerns, you can definitely reach out to our support and we'll take a look because we did find one or two cases where someone might have built a website in a very unique way. And for that, we have ways to fix it or things like that. But in general, you should not see any impact to your page performance. Thank you. I appreciate that. 
Um, so one of the wild idea I had or uh, wish list that I would say, since I have you here. So as a marketer, obviously, you know, the, the metrics that you have here will definitely help us understand uh, the behavior of our, our user on our site and, and, and impact or improve our conversion. So the sales team, they are obviously completely detached from all the marketing analytics. They don't see what, what is happening on the site. Maybe if you have HubSpot, you get ton, a little bit of data, page view and a bunch of other stuff, how many times they came back. Is there a way to associate clarity um, recording of, of a session, for example, with, let's say someone is making an inquiry about our service. So they, they haven't bought our service yet, uh, mm -hmm. or like, you know, they, they didn't make a purchase yet, but they, they are submitting their details, sort of like an inquiry, attach the recording, send it to sales. So sales can, sales can see that what are they doing on the site, what pages they're going, what exactly they're doing on the site. Similarly, you go to like an e-commerce, uh, sorry, um, a retail store, you see what aisle people are walking by and then how do you know, stack your products so that you get better um, engagement and sales. Is there a way or is it like too crazy idea <laughs> to, to talk about? No, it, it's a common pain point I hear. And, and it, it makes sense. It makes sense because you're trying to figure out, you know, did this user that have a frustration actually end up coming back and buying the product or never came through? And maybe you want to reach out to them with an email and offer them a coupon or something. So the, those, I think, are very valid cases. And one of the ways we're tackling that is making it clarity uh, compatible with other tools. So we know there's all these other tools you use, whether it's CRM or some marketing tools or A-B testing tools. We want to be connected with these tools uh -huh. so you can pass information along with them. But one thing that we uh, shipped earlier this year is custom ID support. So what custom ID does is the ability to pass in your own like random GUID value uh, for a particular user. So that way you can track that across your systems, like your CRM system, you might have the same user ID. So then you can con connect the data between these different platforms. That is a very good idea. I will, I'll give it a try <laughs> for, for our inquiry forms. Um, awesome. I just like have a couple of quick ones um, uh, here. So one is the... Uh, the the form abandon so this is a feature so obviously those who have used hodger uh, they had this feature i think they discontinued this feature uh, you could see like you know how many fields that uh, your visitors are interacting and what point they're dropping off which is very useful like you know to understand the length of the form and what is working what is not working is yeah. there such feature available or are you planning to work on something like this yeah great question so that feature is not available currently but that is something that's in development right now, we're calling this as part of what we call smart events, where we're trying to reduce the burden of a website owner having to figure out what are all the different events I need to track and then manually track them. Uh -huh. Instead, we're trying to just use general rules and AI to figure out, okay, these are the contact us buttons across your pages. Well, let's group that as one event. This is the add to cart or you know buy now, all of these purchase actions, let's put those together. And form abandonment is another event that we're tracking and going to be able to track soon. So mm -hmm. then you can filter your data based on these different events and, and see where they abandoned or where they didn't finish, where the event steps didn't happen. And our goal is to help you build these funnels so you can understand, okay, the user came to my page, so I have a page visit, and then they went and tried to uh, add the, the cart, but it didn't work out, so there was no purchase event. So we want to help you get to those steps. Uh, so talking about funnel, will that be part of um, the new features that smart event or you already have it? And then the like second related question um, is that will, will, will this features, let's say funnel or asking your co-pilot or let's say conversion re-optimizer that we have similar questions like, you know, break down my funnel. What, what are people are doing? Is that a feature that you are thinking that will work as well? Yeah, so we're trying it in two different ways. So funnels doesn't exist now. We're, we're looking at smart events as the way to build those funnels. Mm -hmm. As well as we're also testing it with our uh, co-pilot chat system. So me playing around with the chat system, I was able to say, okay, tell me the number of users that started on this page, went to this page, but uh, didn't purchase now on this page. And the, the cool thing with the chat system is able to figure this out through the clarity data, come back and give you that breakdown. So mm -hmm. like even dynamic funnels based on this chat. So that's also something we're experimenting with to see, you know, we, the customer doesn't have to build a funnel at the beginning. Instead, they could actually just ask the specific funnel they want at any time they want. 
Awesome. I'm, I'm, I really, really, I'm really excited about these features. Um, I think it will yeah. definitely help marketers at least like, you know, um, get the benefit out of the data. I think one of the challenges that we have with any tool is just, it, it, there's a lot of data, like it, understanding the data and also time is the essence of, like, you know, the reading through the data and finding the solution. It's the, the nightmare for most marketers. Um, so I appreciate that you guys taking the initiative to kind of help elevate that pain, uh, which I strongly believe that will help. Um, awesome. So I, I think that covers most of the questions and also the topic that we wanted to talk about. Um, you already covered the, the new um, features that are coming. What are the yeah. best way our audience can reach out to you or, you know, get insight from Clarity team or understand more about Clarity? Sure. The best is if you follow us on social media, whether it's on TikTok or Instagram, LinkedIn, or even on TikTok, where you'll see me dancing once in a while, <laughs> but you don't have to watch me dance. But at least we try to get new product updates into those uh, forums easy as possible. You can also subscribe to our mailing. Like if you could sign up for Clarity, we have option for you to get an email when a new feature is available. So that way you can be uh, very well versed with all the new stuff that's coming out and be one of the first to give feedback and make help us make the product better for you. Awesome. And I, I um, apologize for doing this. The very I got really one last minute question. I completely didn't say this um, about privacy. <laughs> so yeah. I thought definitely let's take this up. Um, yeah. So Dan asked, like, can you address privacy concern? What precaution do sites need to take to ensure clarity doesn't impact compliance measurement measures? Sure. Um, and also in relation to that one, I want to add to uh, to that question is the, the GDPR in the, the UK and Europe. How does that impact? And you know, what, what information do you have to disclose in our privacy policy uh, page? Sure. Uh, the best thing is I would follow when you sign up for Clarity, what we have is a, a thing called a Clarity tour. It gives you information on how do you set up Clarity, how to set up your team management and all the additional features you need to do in terms of like cookie consent and privacy and disclosures. So I would follow that guidance because that's written and it's well documented. Mm -hmm. I might get something when I'm speaking out loud. So just, I would trust that documentation more than what I'm saying. But at the high level, the first common thing that we have in the EU is like cookie policy. So what Clarity allows you to do is add cookie consent banner before you add Clarity cookies to the site. So uh, basically what, what will happen if you don't drop these cookies is Clarity will still work, but you basically can't stitch user sessions between page views. So you'll still get the benefits of Clarity, but you just don't know that this was the same user that jumped from page A to page B to create one session. So once a user accepts the cookies, then it will stitch those sessions as with the same thing because there's a cookie. So that's for cookie. The other big thing is, uh, is a feature called masking. So masking is the ability for a website owner to obfuscate content on the page. So whether it's sensitive content or it's content that you don't want sharing outside of your business, you can basically mask out that content and that happens directly on the browser itself. So Clarity never gets that data. And we automatically do some masking by default. So anytime there's a form input field, we don't capture any of the content that's happening inside that form input because we don't know whether that's a credit card field or a password field or what's your favorite animal field, we don't know. So to be safe and to not have any privacy concern, we mask out input fields by default. And then you can mask out certain elements on the page yourself by saying, hey, this is a sign-in experience where I have a profile picture. I want to mask out that so I can pass in a CSS element uh, or CSS uh, uh, name of that class and it will mask that element out. And you can do it through our programmatic API as well. So when you're publishing the website, you can add a tag that says this section of the uh, page is masked out. So that will help ensure you're not capturing sensitive data because we don't want you to be sending PII data to us and you don't want to be doing that either. So that's that's another part. And the last part is like disclosures. And this is something, again, up to the website owners to implement all of these things. But you can disclose through your privacy policy as through like a footer about how you're using Clarity and all of that. And we have both sample uh, text or key points that you should cover if you want to write your own in your privacy policy can help you, of course, alleviate as much of these privacy uh, concerns as possible. But end of the day, I would still review with your privacy and legal team whenever you adopt a new product into your business. We do the same thing at Microsoft. 
That makes sense though. Um, I've noticed the masking for the, the input field. So in, even in the recording, it does not record what information yeah. I'm putting. I did not know the custom masking option, which is which is obviously awesome. Yeah. Um, great. I hope I hope that um, answered your questions. Then. And obviously, if there's any follow-up questions, by all means, reach out to Clarity Support Team. Uh, they have great documentation that, uh, you know, I think they're all available publicly. Everything that uh, Ravi just shared about the privacy, th those are also available. Um if you have any questions for him, you can obviously reach out to him via LinkedIn and Twitter. Um, I'm not sure how busy uh, more you. I'm sure you're very busy, but um, if he has time, obviously we'll try his absolute best to get back to you. And I'll personally try my absolute best to get him again to chat with us after the co-pilot co -pilot is live um, for the clarity. And uh, yeah, just get the new new features uh, that they're they're working on and they're excited about. To share with uh, our audience. Yep. Thank you, Nizam, for having me. It's been, you know, quite exciting to get onto a webinar. This is my first live webinar, so hopefully I did well, <laughs> and uh, hopefully you still have a show going forward. <laughs> <laughs> no, you definitely have the like a pro. I mean, you um, actually, uh, Tom, he messes that uh, he made you at um, CMW. Uh, so obviously, you think. Know, you talk at conferences all the time. So this is basically nothing in compared to the conferences. But I really appreciate your time um, joining us today and chatting with us. Uh, and I'm sure audience loved it too. And, and obviously, you know, I'll, I'll follow up separately about the future um, engagement. But yeah, um, thank you very much for, for joining us and chatting with us about Microsoft Clarity. Yeah, thank you. Thank you again for having me. All right, thank you, everyone. Have a wonderful day ahead. Take care. Bye. Bye.